Now for the panel discussion and uh, before they set things up, but I want to make use of the time. And in the panel discussion, first thing I want to do is the question and answers. So questions from you all. You have been sitting since morning and listening to uh, all the speakers. So first thing is for you, if you, any one of you have any questions for, for the speakers, I don't know whether Deepak is still continuing. Is there Deepak, Deepak online or gone? Just check it please, but we have two speakers uh, here, uh, Koshal Raman and Dr. Sood. Any one of you have any questions for any one of these speakers, please? Just feel free. You are, yes, please go ahead. Hello, Dr. Sood. I have a doubt regarding your presentation. First of all, thank you for an exhaustive uh, review of fire safety based on your experience, and it was very helpful for us. Uh, my question is like uh, being an owner of a small hospital. So there is an NBC code, uh, if I'm, uh, I think there is, uh, if, uh, if the building is less than 10 meters, you needn't have the sprinkler system, but you can rely on the firefighting equipment. Is it so, or is it revised, or what? Come again. I For buildings less than 10 meters. Her question is, if building is 10 meters and less, then what are the requirements in terms of fire safety? See the NBC 2016, part four. It clearly says sprinkler is required wherever the fire risk is category 2. So if it is required in a residence, I'm sure it is required in yeah. any building in India. Okay. Only thing is you get concession based on the local fire officer's assessment. What is the risk? If the risk is less than category 2, you don't uh, provide the sprinklers, he may still give you an OC. So it is based on that assessment, risk assessment. Okay. So I think, I think the question is also related to uh, whether a hospital of certain height need a fire NOC or not. Right, like in Denny, I think 15 meter and less, you don't need a fire NOC, but you have to have fire no, fighting if equipment. Basement, you need a NOC. So there are rules defined, and in case, like you mentioned, fire type 2, right? Fire, your and area should not exceed 500 square meters. And you should not have a basement, then sprinkler is not. Thank you. Then ground plus one, up to that point, sprinkler is not. So it will be assessed based on what is the form, what is the area, what, so many other things. And also the Supposing states. your next door is a high risk area, is a fire hazard area, then also you require. Right. So it's not only you, your neighbors also yes. <laughs> force you to make some changes and requirements for your hospitals. Thank you, sir. And I think the state to state variations might also be there. Local, 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 uh, local requirements uh, by imp imposed by the state government. So I think that's also you need to look at. Yeah. Thank you so much for your question. Anyone else? Just feel free. Any questions which comes to your mind, which is which you think your your hospital should be knowing or implementing. <coughs> Anyone online? Any questions from the online audience? No? Okay, great. Thank you so much. So in case they don't have any questions, but you keep thinking if you have uh, questions, and by the time I'll just ask some, some questions to these speakers. Uh, in your, uh, thank you so much for, uh, for your presentation, and I, I'm sorry of repeating things, rich content, uh, very rich content, uh, which is uh, highly educational in nature. And uh, we would like to make use of that in terms of utility for the, the participants, you know. So I would ask that in your experience, and you have shared a lot of experiences, is what have been the most difficult challenge, the most difficult challenge you have ever come across in terms of making a building fire safe, number one, and then making a hospital or a healthcare facility uh, more conducive for the patient flow. You know, that's the most challenging. I see the patient comes and you know where it is. So what in your experience so far, the most challenging situation or experience you have, fire safety and for patient flow? So for fire safety, yeah, it's, it's uh, when I make hospitals, I have a, I go back and check them. All my 120 hospitals I have made, I have periodically go back and actually they call me also for some lectures and other things. My problem is that I have made a fire exit corridor and when I go and I'm saying I can name the hospitals, I can shame them, 
the nurses have put their trolleys they have put their uh, kachra they have put their waste there what will happen now you see ultimately you say fireman he is also a human being he'll come for you he will go to that corridor it is full of smoke electricity has been put off it is dark and instead of reaching the area as per the map which he has been given to him he gets stuck in the corridor to clear that takes time if patient could die we could evacuate the patient he can also be a human being getting burned they die actually every fire they die uh, it's a very interesting story if you see read the minutes of the upar fire the judge asked the fire service man anybody stopped you it is written in the law that your interstitial area should be divided as per the fire compartment has anybody stopped you he said no then why you did, uh, gave the noc so there are checks and balances there at that stage after the fire has taken place but first thing is for you you also have to say why you are not dividing this this is my request to you this is what i have seen small building large building largest building that you disobey the fire rules for the sake of some money you have done a penetration you have not provided adequate safety for that penetration because the architect tells you ki it will cost you 10000 rupees but in time of fire the fire will travel through that penetration to whole hospital there is no point in doing compartmentation if your separation has got penetration right. this is what is my uh, point to all of you request to all of you and if i am part of the project i don't allow the building can stand for 10 years but until it is made fire safe i will not allow it to right. be okay thank you so much dr sud over to yeah. you sir. my my biggest challenge is trying to match the program with the real estate space that's available so when doctor promoters when they start designing you know or the plan to build their hospitals they have a huge requirement a big list of requirements whereas the available space you know the permissible built up area for the particular site they have said, selected is much lesser so i have this huge challenge of matching their huge requirement to the available built up area which is possible and there is only so much you can build on a certain site beyond that it becomes you know illegal to build so within the legal requirement or the built up area that is my biggest challenge which which we try to you know have a discussion with the doctors promoters and say if they can combine some of these areas they can share some of these spaces so that we can effectively utilization we i i showed you a slide on utilization so maybe some of these spaces can be commonly shared so that you know we can use them thank you so much thank you both of you for your for your uh, response see uh, my biggest challenge if i say my biggest challenge to the people like you and the people who are online is that when i talk basics people people expect that we should talk very high level of thing and when i start talking high level of thing people say why is talking high level why is not talking basic so that's the biggest challenge for me for any conference either moderator or a speaker and and i challenge those people in other ways that if you don't know basics why you are talking about advanced thing right and if you know the advanced thing why don't you implement the basic thing either way i challenge both and they fail to respond to my question and same thing i can i can take is here is like we expect everything is super everything be fantastic but we do not follow the basic thing for example i don't know about you but example right example now you have good building fantastic equipment everything is great good fire noc everything in place fire fighting equipment when when things required they don't work for example there is a door for fire evacuation you can push and open but it is not push because old chair broken chair table cartons all are dumped in the staircase blocking the the way now who will teach that people right and on paper you have everything good fire noc but you need it to push you on open it second thing is like we i used to say and i continue saying is that you have documentation right you have some policies procedures which you follow right you are supposed to follow but you don't follow so you have paper but you don't follow the second situation you don't have paper but you follow the right practice right out of which which one you choose you do have document you don't follow 
and you have, don't have any document but you practice best practice which one you follow or you choose and the third one you have documentation and you follow now which one you choose the third one right so these are the three options I always say and ask people which one you choose and which one you practice choosing and practicing two different things right I like to go to a five-star hotel but I, do I go to five-star hotel liking and doing is two different thing same thing for your hospital a small hospital first we should understand the basics if we make our basics strong the foundation would be strong and you will definitely rise on that rather than we talk about what are international patient safety goals for example there are five six seven eight nine ten but if I don't know the example I was giving simple hand hygiene which your nurse or your doctor should do and how you prevent the infection when you fall, don't follow a simple checklist either in a paper form or what he designed electronic and digital form you click 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 and do it it is available but you are not switching the button on you're not putting your pen in action then who will stop the problems tell me right so thinking linking with this my question again coming back to you your experience so much of good technology a good example what is your advice to small hospitals to people who are very much interested to know in making their life easy as an owner as a manager or an administrator of a hospital in terms of everything is okay everything is okay so I'm not restricting fire safety or patient or so everything is okay what is your good advice to make their life easy in terms of the process or technology or whatever digital thing you want to say that's a that's a tough question doctor <laughs> so um, see small and uh, small hospitals they always have this challenge in tier 2 and tier 3 you know definitely you know they're short-handed they don't have enough manpower to do um, what they want to do they are fantastic doctors fantastic promoters but you know they don't have the wherewithal to take care of all these things so my advice first advice you know once you're starting with a small hospital you know to start with make sure you have all the systems in place you know for example you're you're designed by itself to start with your hospital design itself today you might be 15 bed tomorrow you want to be 30 bed or day after you know beyond that you want to be beyond go beyond that actually so you plan well in advance you have some you know professionals advising you so making sure you know if you want to for example if you're selecting a building to start your hospitals for example just have somebody evaluate that for you so don't go simply and just go you know buy that building or whatever it is. even the same with the land also simple as that as simple as that so if you're buying a land you know make sure you have a professional come evaluate that it could be in a land use of you know agriculture which you cannot convert so that is one so once you have your building make sure you have a list have you basically what is critical what is good to have and what is your dream you know so basically three baskets that you can have make sure you have this these departments you want to have in, and also you can build in phase one phase two and phase three you don't have to build everything up front same thing any system that you play by you know any any ac system or anything you know it should be upgradable it could be you know a modular so that you know you don't have to spend more later for a completely different system so this way it's more cost effective so only unless and until you have some experience professional advising you know it's very difficult for you, you know, being in the clinic, in, in the medical fraternity to just know everything. It, it, just because you are experienced, that doesn't mean you know everything, but you can employ some um, uh, professionals to help you out on that, actually. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, yes, uh, Kaushal. Yes, yes. yes, please. So, to this question, I want to tell you three things. Number one, I did uh, one of the projects with DMRC. Why DMRC has no accidents? Because they have done compartmentation in operations. So that is the same thing for you. You stick to delivery of healthcare. You stick to consultations. For the building, the building areas available to you, you stick only to the patient areas. Rest you give to at least one qualified person and it should be his professional work to maintain that for you. If you will come to ILBS, our criteria was that for next 25 years, I don't have to touch the oxygen supply, I don't have to touch the water supply, I don't have to touch the electrical supply. We worked on that. Code requires three systems of sources of electrical power, we gave three. Please stick to that. You will get the total freedom and pleasure of working in that hospital because you don't have to bother. This will not come to you for anything. That is number one. Number two, take systems which are automatic. That is what smart hospital is. 
if there is a fire, if something is announced, so many things should happen automatically. Then you have peace of mind. And third thing is that you have to start, people trust you. Similarly, you have to start trusting the consultants. The, they are there to help you. You cannot read every code, every book. They will read it for you. So you, then you have to stick. You make an objective today, good for next four years. Then after four years, review. Then next four years, you review. Rather than continuously reviewing, because person B has got this thing or person C has got this thing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And I think uh, in keeping the time in mind is that uh, we are coming to the end of this session. And the purpose of panel was actually giving you the opportunity to ask questions. And uh, I'm coming again on the same thing that we should start from somewhere, right? We should start from small things which we can achieve, which we can do to improve safety. And safety means it's a structural safety or it is a, it's a person safety, whether it's a staff or your patient. Somewhere you start, wherever you can. Just don't hold yourself that, no, I don't have a very sophisticated automation digital system, so what should I do? You start doing whatever analog, manual you can do. So you, you just simply start. Start patient identification, stop about, you know, checklist, use some good, uh, good options which you might have in your own capacity. So that makes changes, it makes influences on the delivery system. So I think with this, I would like to thank all other speakers, uh, Kaushal to you, thank you very much, Dr. Sood and, and uh, Deepak who was on remotely uh, joined us. And most importantly, you all. Thank you very much for your uh, presence in person and thank you all who joined remotely through the Zoom line on, uh, to, to us. And, and thanks to the organizers of the conference uh, for making uh, this event a, I would say successful. I'm not going with the numbers. I'm going with the intent and the content what you could assimilate with you. And I think as, as, as Dr. Sudha mentioning, the presentation are up on the website of the conference. You can download, you can read it, and I think you can ask questions if you have any follow-up questions with you. And before I close, if you, any one of you has any questions, last mile questions. Any one of you? No? Okay. So thank you very much. And with this, I would like to uh, close this session here. And we would start the next session, I think, in time. We have lunch break and 2.30, I think, to keep the time flowing. 2.30, if you come back, uh, we can start the second session. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.